where there's smoke, there's not always fire. Sometimes it's just the Black Swamp Brigade cheering on Toledo Villa FC. Cleveland Force drops a match in the first 20 seconds. Kyle Foles had to Cole Peretti just like that, 1-0, on pace for 270 goals. It slows considerably, but Toledo Villa FC picks right up. Just 10 minutes later, Jacob Cache plays it into the box. Jaden Doss is waiting at the far post. 1-1, giddy and gritty. Ali Nasser adds a goal for Toledo Villa to open the second half, but you gotta contain Peretti. Finishing like he started, the Georgetown sophomore ties it in the 88th minute, so there's still time. One minute later, Eli Schott, Jacobo, Sanfiliu, good night. His third straight match with a second half goal. That one's a game winner. 3-2, the full spectrum of emotions in 90 minutes and 60 seconds. Uh, it was a roller coaster again. Um, seeing that ball go in the back of the net late again was just heartbreaking. It was something we talked about all week, something we worked on. You know, it's, it's mental toughness, physical toughness, guys just communicating. Um, when the pressure is starting to rise toward the end of the game, we, we really got to be our like clearest mentally and just communicate the most. So that one uh, definitely hurt, but we fought. We knew that we can get chances. Last game, we had some opportunities late again after they scored, and we knew something was going to come, and we just made, made sure the right guy was on the ball. I guarantee you, when Mason Lowry and Chris Black are on the call, you're always going to get a good finish. Well, I'll say this much for Toledo Villa. They are nothing if not entertaining. That is true. And sometimes you're worried 90 minutes of scoreless soccer. No, no, no. This was like 100 minutes of scoring in there because there was some stoppage time. Mm -hmm. First goal to last goal, a lot of soccer in between, a lot of excitement, a lot of good play too, and a lot of drama, especially stoppage time drama again for Toledo Villa. You know, Villa, its first two years in USL League 2, they've struggled in terms of depth. In fact, you and I have had this conversation many times. Yeah. That's something we thought the squad was lacking, especially in attacking areas. Well, this year in 2023, Jacobo Sanfili, who scored for fun at Sterling College last year, 18 goals in 19 games, he's now come off the bench twice and scored winning goals. Yeah, and that's a conundrum. Okay, he keeps scoring off the bench. Do we start him? I don't think we just keep going off the bench scoring. But no, you've got a number of those attacking players, especially up top, going with two right now. Uh, the, the myriad of decaying players that are in the attacking roles as well that they have that play so well together, you're able to change that that attacking player at the top of the midfield, the two forwards. Obviously, Eli Shope's going to play 10,000 minutes this year, so maybe don't take <laughs> him off on the outside. But on the left side, Cash has gotten some some breaks as well, and there's been uh, Menza stepping in. There's been a lot of production on those roles. That midfield, that attacking front line, so much depth this year, which is going to help due to injuries, as well as help with playing styles, changing to your opponent, which Toledo Villa could not do that in the past. They didn't have the depth to do that. They had to do what they do because they had to. They couldn't be fluid and change, and they can now, and that's huge. Attacking play, clearly a positive for this team. They're getting a lot of good activity in the midfield, and they've got a lot of players they can rotate in and out. The, the issue through four matches, well, the back line. Today they concede after 20 seconds. In fact, their first touch is them kicking off after a goal was scored against them. A, a really direct long ball from the back and Cole Peretti, lethal striker for Cleveland Force, was able to put it away. That's something they need to yeah. sort out. The back three, that flat back three, they still don't really look comfortable with each other, do they? Yeah, and part of it's going to be the, that flat back three and how they interact with the midfielders as well. And like We talked about how much they ask from the, the outside players. So how are they interacting? Because that ball shouldn't have been, shouldn't have been sent. Why was that ball allowed to be sent that early and expose the backs that weren't tight enough yet? So really playing between those lines, the back line, the midfield line, how do they tighten things up, slide some players as well. The good news is, you know, like Eli Shope said when we talked to him afterwards, is they responded. Mm -hmm. But it would be nice not to have to respond. <laughs> it would be nice to go ahead and get that goal and be able to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Four, uh, four center backs really rotate through with big minutes today, so maybe that's something they can be flexible, try some things out a little bit. Um, really good six play in front of those holding midfielders. Uh, did a nice job, Plevin and Torito. Uh, so we'll see. How does that progress as it, as it goes on? And I think that's going to be the number one story for them. Sorting out the back line is a problem for tomorrow. Tonight, yeah. let's just enjoy the late winner from Jacobo Sanfiliu Villa. Now 2-1-1 one one on the season.